Hi students. Uh, so in the last lecture we talked about the phasor transform that would take a function that was in the time domain and transform it to the frequency domain. So this would be a function of omega or um, just frequency where this is angular frequency in radians per second and this is just regular frequency in cycles per second. Um, and this is done by the phasor transform. So if I write out all of our um, big equations for our circuit elements in phasor form, um, if we have a resistor, the equation for the resistor in the time domain for voltage would be V of t is the resistance times I of t. And then in the frequency domain, so written in phasor form, um, I use this kind of double um, form for the letters, kind of like um, if we were writing a vector or something like that, just to indicate that this is in um, phasor form instead of just a regular V and an I. Um, and then for an inductor, an inductor we have this voltage equation is um, has a derivative in it, right? It's der derivative of current with respect to T multiplied by the inductance value. Well, written a, as a phasor, this is just a multiplicative equation, J omega L times the current. And then likewise for a capacitor, um, for a capacitor the derivative term is for the current, so this is C times dv dt, then um, this means that if we change this to the phasor domain, this would be I is equal to J omega C times phasor voltage. So then to write it in terms of V in terms of I, this would be um, phasor current I divided by J omega C. Okay, so um, a big advantage of transforming these equations into the frequency domain is that now we don't have to deal with any derivatives or integrals, we just multiply these values. So um, let's start with the resistor because the resistor, we're, we feel a little bit more comfortable with it. We can manipulate Ohm's law um, in the following way. So if we take this equation for um, a resistor, in phasor form we have that V is equal to R times phasor I. So um, if we change this around to be R is equal to V over I, then this means that the ratio of V to I gives how much resistor, like uh, how much the resistor resists the current flow. Okay, so um, if we rewrite this equation for the resistor, as um, a ratio of V to I, that's gonna give us the resistance. So let's do that for the inductor and the capacitor. So for the inductor, if I take this equation now, and um, I'm gonna rewrite this as, I'm gonna take the V, and I'm gonna divide it by the I, so V over phasor I is going to give us J omega L, and then for the capacitor, if I take this equation here and I write this as the ratio of V to I, this would be one over J omega C. Okay, so then what are these equations telling us? This tells us that um, if we have the ratio of V to I, that is going to give us um, how much the resistor resists the current flow. But for inductors or, and capacitors, these are not resistors. But um, they do actually um, impede the current flow. And since it's, um, it's a way to like kind of slow it down, we call it an impedance instead of specifically a resistance. Um, and this concept of impedance, um, we, we denote it with its own kind of variable, okay? So I'll say that these things here are impedances. And impedance is denoted with this Z. So I'll, I'll do this in phasor form, so I've got this kind of extra line here. So um, let's, let's 
then kind of look into a little more detail on what this impedance actually is. So impedance is actually um, a complex number. So it's going to have a real part and it's going to have a complex part. So it's, it's made up of resistance and reactance. So we've talked about resistance before and reactance. And um, this concept of reactance is new. Um, it has its own variable, it's x. And um, how I would define it is, it's the inertia against current flow. due to electric or magnetic fields, okay? So um, a resistor has resistance, but capacitors and inductance actually have reactance because they generate this inertia because they have electric and magnetic fields due to the way that the, um, the capacitor has these two parallel plates that generate electric field and the inductor has um, a coil that induces a magnetic field, okay? So um, we kind of like, we make this larger umbrella that's going to encapsulate this whole idea of resisting or um, impeding current flow. And so that's what in the impedance is. It's kind of like, it's a general resistance where resistance is due to resistor, but reactance is kind of like a resistance that's due to a capacitor or an inductor. Okay, so this impedance, impedance Z, the formula is just, there's going to be resistance plus or minus some J reactance, okay? So that means that the real part of Z is equal to the resistance. And then this part here is the imaginary part of Z is equal to the reactance, all right? So um, if we were to plot this on the imaginary plane, we have some impedance value Z. The magnitude of Z is gonna be the distance between the origin and this point here. And then if I did a little bit of trigonometry here, this means that um, R, right, the resistance, the real part of this number is going to be here on this real axis where this is the imaginary axis. And then X here is going to be the reactance. So this is resistance. Okay, so um, in the complex plane, so all of the kind of rules are going to be the same here. We have that C is equal to R squared plus X squared. And then we also have that the resistance is equal to the magnitude of Z times the cosine of theta, where theta is this angle here. And then we have the reactance is the magnitude of Z times the sine of theta, because this is the basically the Y component of this coordinate right here. Now, um, since we can express um, resistance, inductance, and capacitance as an impedance, now this is actually gonna make um, our circuits much easier. If we have a circuit that contains a resistor and a capacitor and an inductor, or some variation of those three, now we can convert all of those circuit elements into um, impedances and then impedances are just going to add kind of like resistors. Okay, so let me show you what I mean by that. Suppose we have um, some circuit that has a capacitor and a resistor. Here's another capacitor. And over here in this branch, we have an inductor and another resistor. Okay, so um, we call this an RLC circuit because it has a resistant, a resistor, an inductor, and a capacitor. Um, but remember when we were introducing capacitors and inductors, capacitors um, add in series like resistors in parallel, right? So it's kind of opposite 
Um, inductors add in series just like resistors do. But if we were to add inductors in parallel, they would um, add just like in resistors in parallel, but that's not true for capacitors. Capacitors in parallel add like resistors in series. So um, that's kind of a long-winded way of saying that we can't just add up all of these circuit elements as if they're resistors because these capacitors add in a different way. But what we can do, if we wanted to compute the, um, looking into the terminals this way, if we wanted to compute the equivalent impedance, then we can do that. We can just convert all of these circuit elements into impedances using um, the formula for impedance. So what we're going to do is we're going to change this circuit into basically a series parallel circuit with impedances instead of um, the RLC circuit. Okay, so if I'm going to rewrite this like this, Everywhere I have a circuit element, this is just going to be replaced with a general impedance. So I'll call that Z1, I'll call this Z2, I'll call this Z3, this is Z4, and this is Z5. Okay, so um, let's just say that whatever this capacitor value is, I'll call this C1, and this is R1, and this is C2, and this is L1, and this is R2. Now, um, <clears throat> if we wanted to convert all of these circuit elements into um, impedances, what we're going to have to do is, starting with the first one, Z1, since this is a capacitor, the impedance of a capacitor is given by 1 over J omega C. So that means that I just, um, I find what this capacitance value is, and then whatever um, frequency that my AC signal is that I am connecting the circuit to is going to be my omega. And then I multiply that by J, that's a reciprocal relationship, so this is going to be um, whatever this is gonna, like I could change this to negative J on top, and omega C on the bottom, where this is my C1 value. Okay, so then I look at my Z2. My Z2 is a resistor, so the impedance of a resistor is just going to be whatever that resistance value is, right? So that's just gonna be a straight across conversion. For Z3, this device here is a capacitor, so the impedance of a capacitor is one over J omega C. This time, um, this value is C2, so whatever that capacitance value is in farads or microfarads or whatever it's gonna be here, negative J omega C2. And then for Z4, Z4 is an inductor, so the formula for impedance for inductor is J omega L, and that's going to be my L1 value, whatever that is. And then Z5 is just a plain resistor, so this is just going to be R2. Okay, great. So then at this point, once everything's, um, once you fill in all of these values that you, from your original quantities, um, you would assess these equations. This gives you impedances. Now we just get to combine these impedances like we would resistors. Um, so we don't have to worry about that special exception for adding capacitors in series and parallel. Now everything is just going to add in series just like resistors do. Everything's going to add in parallel just like resistors do. So um, that is going to make our lives much easier. Once we do that, we'll add these two in series. We take that result, add it in parallel to these, um, add it in series, and take that result and add that in series to this. And then we can convert this into one larger um, Z equivalent just by adding all these values together. So um, that is the concept of impedance. It's going to make our lives a little bit easier when we are um, when we're doing RLC circuits and RC circuits and RL circuits. So let me just recap those formulas for you um, for impedance. Impedance of a resistor is going to be, actually I'll write it like this. For resistors, impedance 
Z is just equal to the resistance value because it's purely real. For inductors, our impedance value is going to be J omega L. Remember, because we got this from taking the um, J omega L, from taking the ratio between V and I in phasor form, and then the capacitor, impedance for the capacitor is going to be negative J omega C. All right, so um, you will have these conversion values now in your notes, and so you'll be able to do any computations for RC, RL, and RLC circuits by converting everything to um, impedance first, which is just a generalized resistance and reactance. So let me know if you have any questions about that.